Your Women's History Month reading list is here. Lauren uh, Hubbard, uh, Hubbard's Bazaar. First, A Vindication of the Rights of a Woman by Mary uh, Wollstonecraft. First published in 1792, proto-feminist Wollstonecraft took inspiration from the revolutionaries of her time who demanded greater rights for mankind to advocate for an even more socially uh, malign group, women, independent, educated, and intellectually esteemed. Wollstonecraft has been called one of the mothers of feminist theory posing the idea of women as the natural and intellectual equals of men and deserving of equal treatment and opportunities nearly a hundred years before the term feminist uh, even existed. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf Published in 1929, Woolf's essay took on the established literacy criticism of the time, uh, which claimed that women were inherently lesser writers and creators by virtue of their gender. Instead, Woolf pointed to the vast systematic education and economic failures that uh, stifled women writers of the time. As one with the foundational pieces of a feminist literacy critic, you might expect that Wolf's words lost their potency over the years, but her clever, incisive perspective remains just as inspiring today as it was when it was published. Third, Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Books. Suffice it to say that feminist theory can be a bit dense for some. That's why beloved feminist author and cultural critic Bell Hooks set out in 2000 to create an uh, educational text for those whose understanding of feminism comes from uh, positive references and outdated ideas about feminazis. A passionate ties for the lay feminist who uh, uh, explains and examines inclusive feminism and uh, the practical applications of it in a way that is both entertaining and informative. Gender Outlaw by Kate Bornstein while non-binary may be a relatively new term to mainstream readers, non-binary people uh, and writers have been discussing the complexities of uh, gender fluidity for decades. Originally published uh, in 1994 and recently revised and updated, self-described non-binary trans family uh, Dessel Femme Dyke Bornstein explores the layers of uh, cultural, political, and social factors that uh, inform and shape gender performance, calling out uh, the rigid expectations of a gender binary as harmful to people of all presentations. Fifth, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. In the age of uh, problematic faves, uh, cultural critic Roxane Gay embraces and advocates for the idea of imperfect uh, uh, feminism in her collection of funny, honest uh, essays, pointing out uh, the irony of uh, holding our icons up to impossible to meet uh, standards of thought and behavior. Gay takes on trigger warnings, the complications of loving catchy songs, and despite uh, their degrading lyrics and uh, the ways in which tokenism immediately negatively impacts women and uh, people of color. Six, Little Women by Louisa May Aclot. So feminism may not have been on their mind when she wrote the story of the uh, intrepid March sisters in the uh, 1860s. A culture has influenced numerous generations of bold, loving, and unconventional women. For Lip Mac, Drew, Beth, and Amy, as they grow, find love, pursue their art, and endure loss, Little Women shows the many ways to be a woman and earn their place in the hearts of feminists uh, of all stripes. Seventh, Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Sonnet. Best known for popularizing the term men's planning, Sonnet's collection of personal yet decided, decidedly um, uh, secondary essays and develops into big themes of uh, the modern feminist experience with clarity and humor. From having your own interests explained to you and the Yes or Women movement to, to um, marriage equality, so these pieces are a relatable, often secondhand rage uh, inducing looking to gender in the 2010s. Redefining Realness by Janet Mock. 
As one of the Americans' most recognizable trans activists, Janet Mocha has made a name for herself by breaking grounds for underrepresented women. Her autobiographic following her growth as a multiracial trans woman from a poor background to one of the country's most respected advocates offers a brave and moving look into the search for self and the manifold ways in which one experiences womanhood. Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord. Intersectional feminism has raised its profile in recent years with a more diverse range of voices participating in the conversation than ever before. Much of that is owned to work by writers like family poet and author um, Audrey Lord, who brought a black queer feminist perspective to the forefront of the cultural discussion in this iconic collection of essays and speeches on racism, sexism, and homophobia. Tenth, The Bell Jar by Sylvia uh, Plath. The semi autobiographical story of a one woman's descent into mental illness in the 1950s, The Bell Jar has become a, a quintessential coming of age story for young feminists. Moody and sometimes terse, uh, the prose beautifully encapsulates a moment in the female experience, the desire, uh, disillusionment, and the fear of being young, confused and uh, stifled by the role that uh, society has uh, prescribed. 11th, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. If you have ever enjoyed a feminist retelling uh, of a classic uh, fairy tale, you own a date to Angela Carter, whose uh, 1979 collection of short stories birthed a uh, subgenre all its own. The tales, which include a murderous literary writing whose uh, vampiric sleeping beauties, a beauty who becomes the beast and the wife of a blue beard turned into the tables. I remain some of the most raw and clever examples of the style and everlasting proof of Carter's talent. Twelve, this bridge caught my back. This anthology series features personal essays, uh, criticism, poetry, and uh, even visual art made by over a dozen feminist uh, women of color. It uh, explores the ways they are intersecting identities, gender, race, sexuality, class, shift the ways in which they relate to the world and the way the world in turn relates to them. So, originally published in the 80s, the issues they present and the perspectives they stand for remain as pertinent to today's feminist landscape as they were over 30 years ago. 13. The Female Inuk by uh, Germany Korea. Dynamic and divisive. A career's landmark book has been making waves since it first hit shops in 1970, perhaps best known for its assertion that women should consider testing their own menstrual blood. Guerrero's impassioned, unflinching text became uh, one of the early voices in the moment to call out the traditional nuclear family as a tour of female operation and oppose sexual liberation as essential to women's belief. The original monologue by Eve Insler. While it may not be a traditional book, Insler's episodic play has become a major feminist touch point in the more than 20 years since it was first performed. With the sections dedicated to sexual consent, body image, sex work, uh, reproduction and more, Insler's uh, work was designed to give a voice to women of many races, identities and experiences. 15. In Search of Our Mother's Gardens by Alice Walker. Spent more than 20 years of Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, Alice Walker's extensive career, this collection of essays, speeches, and uh, reviews focuses on both the personal and the political. From her accounts of the civil rights movement to anti-nuclear sentiment, examinations of other writers, and uh, her personal reflections as a black woman, mother, and a feminist matters which she refers to, as a womanist prowess, the book serves as a window into a remarkable woman's mind and a provocative perspective on feminism in the late 20th century. 16th, The Feminine uh, Mystic by Betty Friedan. Uh, the quintessential text of second wave feminism, Friedan's 1963 book, became one of the original pieces of uh, feminist theory to become a mainstream hit. 
It's an indictment of the Mrs. Degree mentality of higher education for women. The substandard treatment of mental illness among female patients, and the cultural perception of women as cogs of consumerism, not creation, have shaped the dialogue of feminist discourse for over half a century. 17th, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Now, an Emmy winning television series, Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale is a, a, a golden. Standard of feminist speculative fiction. The story follows Alfred, a member of the fertile female servant class that is forced to survive in a dystopian near future by serving as a reproductive resource for the ruling class. In a time when women's reproductive rights remain politically contentious, Atwood's seminal novel remains as pertinent now as it did when it hit shelves more than 30 years ago. 18th. The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. Author and philosopher de Beauvoir's um, 1949 book began, uh, began as an autobiographical essay exploring why she thought, of her, uh, she thought of herself as a woman first and everything else second. It reclaimed the problem of woman, which, as she put, has always been the problem of man. Sharp witted and widely, de Beauvoir combines critical theory with personal observation for a formative work of the feminist canon. 19th, Women, Culture and Politics by Angela Y. Davis. A very different political activist, uh, Davis' essential collection of speeches and essays revolves largely around the ways in which the conversations around the sexism, racism, and the economic equality equality shifted in the latter part of the 20th century, from stories of female genital uh, mutilation in Egypt to examinations of rap lyrics and the personal politics of, of race. Davis' biting, brilliant prowess uh, solidifies her place among the important feminist voices of our era. 20th, The Golden Notebook by Doris Lansing, winner of the a Nobel Prize for Literature. This 1962 experimental novel spoke of what was at the time unspeakable women as creatures with sexual desire, with mental illness, who struggle in the climax and yes, menstruate uh, through the lens of Anna, a writer attempting to consolidate notebooks of her life experience and creative work into a cohesive whole. Lacey explores the unpretty side of family life with love, anger, and the rawness that was nigh unheard of for a female author of her era.